Hi everyone, my name is Megan Modafferi. I'm the Community Manager for National Geographic's Education Team. Um, and I'm really glad that you've chosen to join us here tonight. Uh, I'm joined by Amy Pallant. She's the Principal Investigator on High Adventure Science. And today we're Manager here to talk about National Geographic's Education Team. Oh, sorry team. about that. Um, and I'm really glad that you've chosen to Sorry about that, a little bit of a technical glitch. Um, okay. So I'm back, um, and as I was saying, we're here to talk about the National Geographic's Community Climate Challenge. This is a really cool opportunity to empower your class to make a difference in their local community, while also connecting with students and National Geographic explorers from other regions. And the first step to this challenge involves completing an exciting unit with your students from our High Adventure Science Collection, which was created in collaboration with the Concord Consortium. Each unit asks students to consider a pressing question about the future of our planet using real world data and computer models. And uh, this webinar that we're going through today will introduce these units to you and help support you in their implementation. So if you have any questions, you can ask them on the YouTube page where you're viewing this webinar. You'll see the word say something on the right hand side of the video player and that's where you can comment. Uh, and then once Amy's done introducing you to the units, I'll talk through some more of the Community Climate Challenge and the, the steps that come after these, these modules. All right, so without further ado, I'm just gonna pass it over to Amy and she'll take you through the High Adventure Science Collection. Uh, thank you, Megan. Uh, let me just share my screen. And then, let's see. Can you see that now? Yep, that looks great. Okay, so welcome uh, again. I'm Amy Pallant. I'm from the Concord Consor Consortium. I'm the principal investigator on high adventure science. Uh, it was funded by the National Science Foundation, and I worked in partnership with National Geographic to uh, create the curriculum materials you'll be using. Um, the focus of these is uh, all of the modules that you uh, can choose in are looking at human impact on the environment um, and how overpopulation stresses the environment. That's the, the focus. But when thinking about education, you have to make sure that you're not doing all doom and gloom and that you aren't oversimplifying um, the materials uh, or even presenting biased materials. And that's where the High Adventure Science Collection comes from. Um, and, and the principles that I'll be talking about with relationship to how we design the materials follow these five things. One which is using open-ended, authentic frontier science topics to frame the modules. Um, acquaint students with real-world scientific data. Use model-based experimentation as a means for students to acquire content. Engage students in system dynamics reasoning and support evidence-based scientific argumentation. Uh, I'm gonna go through each of these principles a little bit more so that you understand where it's coming from. So when we're talking about these open-ended questions, uh, they were inspired by the 20, 125th five questions presented by Science Magazine in their anniversary edition of, uh, several years ago. And here are some of these unanswered questions that scientists really think are are profound and could potentially change our understanding of ourselves in the world. Um, another principle is related to using real world data. The, the data on the right is real world data about electricity generation in the United States. The left is uh, um, in our climate module we use a, that shows a global air temperature uh, from early 1800s to, to uh, the present. In addition, we have these interactive model-based experiments where students can change variables um, and, and see through the, the uh, visualization and the data that is presented on the right of the modules, of the models themselves, um, emergent phenomenon and use that to help as evidence in explaining their understanding as they work through the models. 
Um, when thinking about these models, you know, the important thing to understand is that there's a lot to, to think about when the students are interacting with them. There's what's happening visually, there's the data and evidence that they're getting as, as coming from the module, and then there's what they have to do. And all of these are highly scaffolded in the curriculum so that students will know how to interact and what particular um, the, the curriculum is asking them to, to pay attention to. Additionally, we have items that engage students in systems dynamics reasoning. And, and we do that because when looking at Earth systems and human impact on Earth systems, there's a lot to focus on, in particular, what, what resources are, for example, um, are students uh, supposed to focus in on the model? And what are the processes that are changing those? What, you know, are there things that um, humans are doing? Are there things that are environmental? And then to apply that reasoning into understanding um, the changes that can happen over time. Additionally, we have argumentation items. Uh, we really require students to think about the evidence that they're getting from the models as well as from the real world data to make a claim typically it's a short answer a multiple choice question to explain their claim so so to to put the evidence from the models and the data in their explanation as to why they made that choice then we also this is unusual and students will will get uh, confused initially but very quickly figure out how to do it they ask we ask them about their certainty about the claim and to rate it and then to explain what influences certainty and over you know time we're hoping that students will move from i don't really understand the topic i don't know enough to thinking about sources of scientific uncertainty such as limitations in the model or limitations in the data that they're interpreting so why focus on certainty? This is um, a really great way to teach about the nature of science. Um, a lot of time when you hear about, you know, questions about climate change, the, the scientists will say, I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen in the future with 100% certainty. And that, and that so part of it is understanding what the scientists mean by uncertainty, that predictions are hard because you can't predict with certainty, um, that their data might be limited, etc. So um, helping students think about the nature of science. In addition, I guess the thing that you will uh, may want to do is, is register your classes so that you can see student answers. So when uh, on one of the uh, unit sites, you can see this tip, which is to save students data for grading, um, register your class for the High Adventure Science portal page. When you click on that link, you will find, you will come to a page that looks like this, where if you have registered, you put your name up, your username and password at the top. If not, you sign up. It's a very simple, it's free, it's easy to do. You just put your name and, and the information they, they collect for you. And then once you've registered, you will see a page that looks like the top where it says, okay, you've signed in successfully. Now, what do you want to assign? You have, you have an assigned a, a, a module to your class. So you just click on search, you click High Adventure Science 2 or has to, and then choose the, the unit that you want to assign. What you can see here is we also provide a hard copy of the teacher guide that you already have online at the National Geographic sign, site, but you also have the ability to assign to a class um, and preview all the material. Once you do, you can see students actions like so so you can see the color coding where um, under the, the black or the gray box on the left under activity is actually a list of students names in a class but I didn't want to share the names but for each line it's a student name and you can see how much of the the first activity constructing an argument the students have completed and if they haven't completed it you'll see it's in progress or not yet started and then you can drill down and see student answers in it um, other information is uh, at has.conquer.org 
um, there's a link, or you can just do has at conquer.org if you have any questions about the technology or about signing up or about students' work not being saved or you know any technical glitches or any questions about the curriculum. That's the best way to reach me. So that's a really quick rundown on how to use it. Um, let me know if there's anything else. I'm going to stop sharing the screen and and uh, I think I'm there. I go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Great. So much. Thank you so much. Um, I'm hearing a little bit of an echo. Let me just see if that has gone away. Amy, can you hear me all right still? I can. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so that was great. Thank you so much for taking us through that, Amy. And because we're so excited at, here at Nat Geo about the High Adventure Science Collection, that's really why we wanted to do this Community Climate Challenge. We really want uh, as many teachers as possible to try out this really cool technology and provide their students with this cool opportunity for authentic learning. So I'll just run through the uh, steps of the challenge really quickly, um, but you can read all about it. There's a link to all the information about the Community Climate Challenge in the description of this YouTube page. Um, and there's also uh, a link for how you can sign up to participate. So the first step will be to visit the Concord Consortium's High Adventure Science Collection and pick out which of the following units that are related to the theme of climate that you'd like to go through with your class. So those are what is the future of Earth's climate? What are our energy choices? Will there be enough fresh water? Will the air be clean enough to breathe? And can we feed the growing population? So you'll choose one of those and you'll go through it with your class and hopefully your students will learn a lot and have a lot of fun as they go through that. And then the next step, this is the biggest step and the thing we're most excited about, is we'll ask you to let your class drive uh, the creation of a service project that impacts your local community. So the only two requirements are that it should relate in some way to what your students learned from their study of the High Adventure Science Unit and that it should be locally focused. Then there's an optional step where if you'd like, uh, you can sign up to be partnered with another class who's completing this challenge somewhere else in the country or in the world. And in that case, I'll just connect you by email with a few suggestions of how you might want to collaborate and enhance your students' learning, particularly if you guys are each doing a different module. Um, and you can talk about how your local communities are different and so your service projects are different as well. And then finally, uh, well not finally, the second to last step is that we ask that you share your work with Nat Geo. So on the form you'll see my email address and we request that you send us a few things. Uh, first, some printed, signed, and scanned photo release forms for the students in your class who participated in the project. Then three to five photos from any stage of this process. And finally, a student-created recap of the service project. So this, you can be creative with how this is delivered. This could be a video, a blog, a photo of a project board, a podcast, uh, anything that just tells the story of what your service project was. And then finally, this is the really exciting part. We're gonna have a really big video conference between participating classes where uh, students will be chosen to present about their service project and what they learned. And we're gonna invite Nat Geo staff um, and several National Geographic explorers who work on climate related issues to listen to the students report on what they've done and give uh, encouragement and feedback. Uh, so that's just a really cool opportunity to connect to for, not only to show students that they can make a difference themselves, but then to uh, really drive that message home by connecting them to people who are out in the world making a difference every day, uh, supported by National Geographic grants. Um, so I really invite you to uh, go to the description of this YouTube page and check out our Community Climate Challenge that's linked there and sign up. You'll also find my email on there, so feel free to email me if you have any questions at all. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate you viewing us tonight, and we'll be in touch more soon. Have a great night.